Here at the College of Veterinary Medicine, we offer three different graduate programs. We have a master's degree in veterinary and biomedical sciences with options for thesis or non-thesis. We also offer a PhD in veterinary and biomedical science. We also offer a PhD in environmental toxicology. Research in the College of Veterinary Medicine is very diverse. We have a, a great group of environmental toxicologists. We have the largest number of epidemiologists of any of the colleges of veterinary medicine in the United States. And people like pathologists and diagnosticians that are developing diagnostic tests. And there's a lot of different opportunities for graduate students to excel in. My name is Hannah Knight and I'm a fourth year veterinary student and a dual degree DVM PhD student. I liked that integrating research and using your question-based approach method would integrate with the clinical practice side of things because I've always been very clinically minded and that's why I wanted to do the DVM program. But I also think that the research program helps me be a more well-rounded student and look at things from a different perspective. Our summer research experience is an opportunity for our first year veterinary students to conduct research for about 12 weeks during the summer. Students who think they might be interested in research but they don't know for sure can apply and if they're accepted into the program they get a really nice stipend, they work in a lab like our lab or in other labs in the college and then they present the results of their research. These may be students who already have research experience or students who have never done research before. So they get to learn how to come up with a hypothesis, come up with a way to test that hypothesis, get in the lab and do those experiments, and then they have to communicate the results at the end of the, of the summer. I was afforded the ability to go to UMMC and view their research facilities and their research lab and see their work with the monkeys that they use, which was really cool. Um, and we were also afforded going to the convention, which was in Puerto Rico this year. Um, so that was super fun and I really enjoyed it and I wouldn't have been able to go without being in this program. Oftentimes a, a research question doesn't just involve, you know, one area of expertise. You know, you need multiple experts to be able to answer those questions and conduct a study and, and we have that with our collaborative environment here. The Feed the Future Innovation Lab for Fish or the Fish Innovation Lab is its shorter name, is funded by USAID and basically what the, the Feed the Future program does is address livelihoods and nutrition. And so what our projects do is work in these countries that are high priority for the Fish Innovation Lab to address nutritional and livelihood needs in countries. It is a real recognition of the expertise and the capabilities and the qualifications of Mississippi State University to be able to host one of these innovation labs. The Fish Innovation Lab it allows the students to gain research experience, but also do that in the international realm and get experience traveling uh, and, and have those cultural exchanges. We've had some very interesting research results so far. There's a real need to build aquaculture and, and help specific countries around the world be able to produce enough fish for all of their population. The Aquatic Research and Diagnostic Laboratory uh, serves in support of the catfish industry. We uh, provide diagnostic support and uh, diagnostic services in support of uh, U.S. farm-raised catfish. Within probably 100 miles radius of this lab is probably about 70 to 80 percent of the industry. Catfish is one of the most sustainable fish that is cultured, so being able to provide some food security that way and help in that process is what uh, drives me or encourages me as motivation. We serve as the conduit of the catfish industry. We actually have face-to-face -face and daily interactions with the producers. We know uh, what are the diseases of uh, most importance, and that helps drive our research program. I got a chance to work on a uh, snail reduction research that is happening at Mississippi State and there I could go on farms and uh, know a lot about what snails are doing in the catfish ponds. I'm a parasitologist here in the College of Veterinary Medicine. I work primarily with aquatic animal parasites. Our uh, research area is focused on catfish health. Catfish is a very important agricultural commodity for our state so we are trying to 
figure out the life cycles of all the parasites that are affecting the industry and come up with ways in which we can manage them. So it's a, a labor of love uh, and one that involves a lot of going out into the field, interacting with the stakeholders in the industry. So it's a very rewarding job. And then of course, I get to mentor graduate students that are doing research and it's always very warm and, and special to me to see them succeed and actually get a uh, publication by the end of it. So. I'm the project manager for the Global Center of Aquatic Health and Food Security's Gulf Coast Aquatic Health Program. I love seeing students to participate in the marine mammal work and the sea turtle work that we do. Marine Monday is an online Canvas course that's available to all faculty, staff, and students here at the College of Veterinary Medicine. I bring in speakers that talk about everything from sea turtle fiber papillomaviruses to sea lion health and marine mammal strandings, also marine mammal birthing and calf feeding, topics of that nature. My research is mainly focused on aquatic animal health. Recently, we have two new exciting projects. One is uh, bottlenose dolphin genetics and the other is sea turtle genetics studies. The sea turtle project, I had a summer student worked on this project this summer. So she analyzed around 200 uh, sea turtle samples and we were successful to amplify mitochondrial DNA. Based on those sequences, we are going to conduct similar analysis and try to understand the sea turtle populations in the Gulf of Mexico. The research we're doing here is informing the cause of death of what's impacting these dolphins and these turtles in the Mississippi Sound. And that's really helping us better manage the populations out in the wild. We're seeing extinction happen on this planet in a way that we've never seen before. So these students are actually getting hands-on work with the most critically endangered sea turtle in the world. So I'm trained as an immunotoxicologist, so that means I study the interaction between immunology, toxicology, and pharmacology. And so there are two main projects in my lab. One is understanding how chemicals from the marijuana plant affect our immune system. And the other one is how environmental chemicals that might already be in the environment from various sources affect our immune system as well. So the ultimate goal of our research is to make sure that we understand how drugs or chemicals affect the immune system so that we can inform others about the risk or benefits of using or stumbling upon some of these chemicals. Yeah, I'm a toxicologist. We're looking at a number of neurotoxic chemicals that affect the nervous system. And the main thing that we're trying to do right now is to develop better antidotes to some of these chemicals so that the brain function can be preserved. Prior to that, we've had a lot of funding to look at different types of pesticides, and we've had some funding by the Department of Defense and also the Environmental Protection Agency. A lot of our work has shown that pesticides show a wide range of toxicity levels, and we've discovered some of the biochemical features that allow them to be either more toxic or less toxic. And so studying some of those enzymes and biochemical factors has been really interesting. I didn't really used to have any interest in research when I was in vet school. I just wanted to be a veterinarian taking care of sick animals. And then I learned that to understand how to take good care of animals, somebody was going to have to do the research to figure out how to solve the new problems that are coming along. I've worked on respiratory diseases for my whole career, which has been going on for more than 30 years. The respiratory disease is the bovine respiratory disease complex. It's the leading cause of sickness and death in beef cattle in the United States. And we are interested in the immune response to bovine respiratory disease and in helping the calf's immune response better fight off respiratory infection. We have a uh, residency in population medicine that is one of only three approved residency programs in the United States uh, related to population medicine and epidemiology. So we train residents by having them experience uh, outbreak investigations. Another area that we're known for in the college is our work with antimicrobial stewardship. The, the key themes of my research has really been how do we better manage the health of animals and improve the production of those animals um, while not being dependent on antibiotics to do so. I'm a professor in the Department of Comparative Biomedical Sciences. Computational biology, as the name indicates, is using computers to understand biology. In these days, we are using machine learning to look at poultry production systems and identify management practices that contribute to the prevalence of zoonotic pathogens like foodborne pathogens like Salmonella, Listeria and Campylobacter. Ultimately this is towards making the food safe 
for all of us to consume. The poultry recession diagnostic lab um, sees anything with feathers. The majority of the poultry that we see is commercial poultry. Our poultry residency training program, it is one of only eight programs in the US which is certified by the American College of Poultry Veterinarians. Our students are training in uh, the most important uh, um, subjects of avian medicine, uh, vir poultry virology, poultry histopathology, but another very important thing is that when they are in the lab they have the opportunity to be related with multiple activities. Uh, the bacteriology lab, the virology lab, the molecular lab. So when they are being educated under our program, they have the opportunity to get a complete education in avian medicine. Our faculty is engaged in applied research that specifically addresses the questions that the poultry industry has. I supervise the poultry virology section uh, that section is in, uh, dedicated to the detection of viruses that are circulating in poultry. We do mostly viral isolation and we do using uh, chicken embryonated eggs and cell cultures. I'm so excited to work with veterinary students who become researchers in animal health because they're such bright people. They often have a real curiosity, a real love of the animals. And look, I can't do all this work myself. I need them to actually do the work and carry the work forward. And not to mention the fact, my students often ask questions that I haven't thought of. Seriously, we are a team here. I tell my students, I need you to think because I can't think of all the important stuff. You have to help, and they do. They come up with great ideas, great questions that really make the research better. The research that I do and the research that other people do here in this college are truly life-changing new discoveries that will be important for animal health and, and human health in the future.